Tell you what, we brought some materials into this house. Tell you what, this eighteen mil ply is ready. Working it all out, see as we're going, because I ain't a roofer. Roof's going up. Said, boy, if you want to earn yourself a few more quid, you've got to want to show you the fish quickly. It's all turned up. My filtration system is here. Get on, Dad. What's on my booty? Because I've been a snake's ass in a chicken shed up here, and I ain't even got the roof on yet, boy. Open safety first. Get your goggles on. I can bang all the way down through. Got a bit of a bird's eye view from up here, boy. Pretty, pretty good. Just noticed something. Where's me Yorkshire puddings? This is Whisperer. Yeah. OSD's going on. I said, don't worry. Check out the McGeeter, lad. All me noggins is sat in. Put the OSB on the back here. So 15 years of age, and this boy can do more than what most kids can do, because I teach him young. So, now we have the feverage all done on the top. Give a spacer to allow expansion. So me and Toad just whacking up the feverage. <laughs> and your mother would have run it. James, your gate looks good, but I think anyone can get in there. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with myself again. There we go then. So now we have a gate. Mrs. Whisperer, tonight, me and you, I get the gutter in fed. And welcome back to another video. Start with, I'd love it if you could like this video. Let's see if we can hit 2,000 likes on this video. Sit back, enjoy the video, and check out what I've been up to this week. Brought in a load more timber so I can finish off the roof. I've got a load of timber out the front, but check what else has just turned up. Happy, happy days so it's now time to get a load of plywood all sheeted across the top of here my rubber roof turns up i can put the rubber roof down i'm going to show you all that as we're going today i'm going to go out the front grab all my uh plywood that i've just had turn up so we got seven sheets of plywood 18 mil thickness this here i'm hoping my measurements are going to be right and i don't get hardly any wastage whatsoever i'm going to carry this through now i've called in my cousin to help out again let's crack on tell you what we brought some materials into this house First sheet, one sheet at a time, I think, and then we'll just pop it up, do one sheet at a time, start at that corner, and we'll work our way back. Roof's going up. Old Tobe's out. We just got home from work and it's by. I said, boy, if you want to earn yourself a few more quid, you can help out your dad today. So what he's doing for me is uh, we bought some of this stuff, Wix water seal. So basically what it does, it just helps protect the outside of your block work. And all he's doing is just painting the outside of the block work. Carry on doing all of that, mate, and uh, happy days. It'll help a little bit anyway before we paint it. It was only 18 quid and it'll be enough to do all of the block work. And it will just help protect it that little bit better and spread it all right in boy like that happy days straight up there isn't it? Whoa, I tell you what this 18 mil ply is very heavy Your boy day, builder boy lunchtime. I have to work on my roofer. What the hell is going on here? He's on the rafters good here anyway. Right here. I'll get in there and just buddy up a minute. Tell you what, we built one hell of a frame. We'll put our noggins in in a minute, running right up through the middle to hold the middle down. Working it all out, see, as we're going, because I ain't a roofer, just having a good go at it. Get on, Dad. What's on my booty? It's on that middle bit, it will go. And push on it with my hand, and we'll close that joint up, just that extra little bit. Just give it a bit. Yeah, he, he does. 
Yeah, that closes that up. Driving it home, boy! Oh, you're going to have to come down, cameraman. I'll need some screws, boy. Just push on your corner pink. Button up tight, see? You likes a tight joint. Send it home with a 50 miller. Like that. Drive another one on the back end of them. Like a glove. Tell you what. Is hotter than a snake's ass in a chicken shed up here, and I ain't even got the roof on yet, boy. Woo! Wrap up! chalk line now and we'll chalk line and then I'll scribe and cut again like we did a minute ago the old chalk line out see we'll get it exactly where we need to cut it and then the overhang I'll get rid of yep give them a chalk line gives us a bit of an edge ready to follow grab out the Makita and follow the line Health and safety first, get your goggles on. That's what you call the absolute hammer boy! Winding back in, get a bit more chalk on in boy, that's what we need. So what we're doing now, just going up through the chalk line, just so I know where to bang in all my screws in a minute. Cameraman, you might get a bit dusty. Right, let's just bang up through the chalk line. Basically on every single rafter, just so I know where the joints are to. And then I can bang all the way down through with a load of screws and a bit more chalk. Just squaring up the front beams. Forgot what camera I was looking at then. Famous, see? I've got people filming me there, people filming me there, people filming me up there, boy! Look out now, then! So we're just countersinking the, um... My boy's pre-drilling it, now we've got the corners in place. And then we're just using a countersinker. And then we're just using a drill bit, just so we don't split the marine ply. And then just... Sending the screws home nice and flush. Like a glove. Yeah, so where we got to try and get through that one. That's it, perfect. Yeah. Exactly there, do that every time, boy. We're just cutting out the noggins, making sure they all fits in, like an absolute glove, before we put the last sheets on the back. We just pumped in 289 screws in the top of this. Absolutely loads of them, man. I'll tell you what, my kneecaps feel on fire, but I just stood up for a little bit. Old Chip here, he's just knocking out all of me noggins, just making sure they all fit in absolutely bang on. He's just sorting that out. Tobe's finished doing the uh, waterproofing down the back. Tidy old job for a minute. Got all that there drying off. See, he's actually put three coats on, so hopefully the time we put the sheet down, no moisture will come up behind the back there. Happy, happy days. So, uh, 
It's all systems go here in the Koi Whisperer house. Just having a bit of food as well as we speak. Case is in there, look. She's thinking, where's my food? I'll have a bit of that. Right then, so I've got to make some cuts in this plywood, really, to fill in the back gaps. I've over-measured it, because I need that good edge, that good edge, and I'm hoping I get one straight edge. Like I said, you've got to make do with tools you've got. So what we've done, we clamped a bit of timber. Hopefully this gives me a nice straight edge, and then I'm just going to run right up through the timber. <laughs> Bit of customised trimming going on here, I reckon, boys. What do you reckon? We need what you call a sliver. Only a sliver, but it will do. Basically, everyone's been perfect, apart from this one here. So we just decided to give it a little sliver just to make our life easier. And now we're going to get the faceplate on the front and go from there. But roof's all up, singing and dancing, all fixed in. 2,022 million screws up there. Look at that, look. Likes that. Happy days. Cracking on, see, we're making A when the sun shines because they forecast a bit of rain tonight. So we're planning to get the tarps up, make it watertight, and then we're going to put the rubber roof on, hopefully, in a couple of days' time when it's a bit drier. What do you reckon, boys? Yeah, that's what I reckon. Yeah. Just whacking up her noggin, see? You've got to love a noggin. It is hot. And not very comfortable. But Toad, put the phone down, boy. We need to get some more timber, boy. Now <laughs> this is our proof to you lot. It's started to rain. You can see the rain coming in. But look what we just done. We just chucked two tarps up. Proper waterproof. And it's actually the first time for a long, long time that no rain is getting in that pond. We haven't managed to get the face plates on yet. We're just putting some of this timber. We don't want to get it soaking. So we're just putting some of the timber inside of the pond a minute until we can get these face plates cut. Probably going to have to put the saw and everything in the filter house. You know, rain comes in. Got to do what you can do when you can do it. James? What up? It's getting late, you know. I ain't got time to mess around, love. I need to get things done. Just cut me 45 to get into here and make sure I've got two joints going like that, like you do skirting board, and then it looks absolutely z hammer. Me, yeah, you can't even notice it. Yeah. Let's pack the answer away in. Tope, sore. 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 What, the sore boy or what? Got things to get on with, my booty. That's the other boy! I've got to do a bit of a skin fade on this one a second. Can't get another one. That is what you call a skin fade. Any barber will like this. Down to the skin, boy. Go and show the camera that thing. That's what you call a wafer-thin skin fade, boy. So uh, it's a little bit windy today, but just done me uh, filter clean this morning before I get started. Just making sure I've got me drip going in. That's been going all night like that. Drip, 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 drip. But yeah, probably another six hours before I bring myself back up to the levels where I need to be. But just done a water check. Everything's all singing and dancing. They're all looking really good. Here we go, look. So they're all doing well. They're all full of beans. Big Betty, I mean. Big Betty. Looks like she's got a little mark back on... Oh, I spooked her then. Looks like she's got a little mark back on her dorsal fin again. Can't really do much about it at the moment. It doesn't look too bad. So I'm keeping an eye on it. But everywhere, everyone else in here, they're all doing well. And the water quality's holding up. Clarity's not as good as what it normally is. It ain't bad. And, uh, well, I have just flushed this one out and give everything a bit of a clean, so... I'll let this continue to top up at this speed the rest of the day. Let's crack on with some more roof work. The face plate got put on last night. It was getting a bit dark, so I couldn't can continue to film last night. But yeah, so basically the front face plate is all, all the way on. I will take it off and show you. 
The tarpaulin staying up there for now because they forecast some horrible weather today. So all I'm going to be doing, where I've pinned it all down, I'm just going to be unpinning, do the side panel, do the side panel, do the back and just roll over the bits I need to work with. I'm planning to get the 6B1, which is on the bottom there. I've kept that as dry as I could. I couldn't fit it in the pond here last night. It was pointless. It started rain coming, getting dark, and I just left it there. I thought it, if it gets wet, it gets wet. Got all my small bits of material down there, which is all of this is all off cuts from what I've done so far. And this will all be along the back when I make my framework for the showers either side. But I want to finish the roof first today. The OSB sheets that I've got over there. I'm, if I've got time, this is what I'm doing today. I'm going to pin behind the back of the filter house, the side of the filter house. And just get as much done as I can. And as you know, I'm doing it by myself. And I've got my cousin helping me. And things take me a lot longer than what it takes anybody else. I like working things out and I like doing it right. And... You know, I can only do things as and when I can. Me and my cousin have done a cracking job on this roof. And my son, Tobe, more than happy with it. Some people's going to say, why have you completely roofed the pond? Well, the main reason why I've roofed the pond is because it stops any predators getting to your pond. It stops all parasite issues with like birds, bird poo and things like that getting into your pond water. And the lights that will be going up underneath the pond, I'm actually going to be using some lights that they like like basically what they're doing in aquarium systems i don't like having loads of sunlight on my pond anyway i just find my water clarity's better and when the sun turns around here midday about 12 one o'clock i get full sun on this pond which will come in on that angle which will be more than enough for what the koi need but like i said all the all of the lights that will be going up underneath here they're not just going to be standard light bulbs i'll show you that when i get to it this is what we're up to today. Let's crack on with today's video. It is a Sunday. We gotta love a Sunday's video. So I know there's a lot of people wondering what that little clip was in the beginning of this video. Well, it's all turned up. My filtration system is here, but it will be explained in another video. Once I start getting it set up, I'm gonna show you what I got, what, I've, what I'm have what i gonna be using, how I'm gonna be running it, how it's gonna be working. Just trust me guys, stick around for these videos and I'll explain what brand I've got, where I got it from, how much I paid and absolutely everything. When I get to it, let me get to that stage first. Hey, Pink, got a bit of a bird's eye view from up here, boy. <laughs> so we're just putting the back plates on. I'm up here just pinning it on, but look at this for a nice tight finish all the way up through. That there's what you call pretty, pretty good. See, what you've got to use is the old bevel gauge. You cannot beat the old bevel gauge, see? All we do, we just offer that up here, get the right angle, cut this one first, and then we'll just dummy test to make sure we got it right, and then we'll cut that one down there. But all the trim plates are on, all the way around. Last one we're doing, and hopefully we've beat the rain today. So we're gonna get this one cut, put the tarp back, and then go and have roast dinner. Abby, abby days. We set up in here just in case. There's the last piece. But what we're going to do just before we put some screws in, we were going to just finish this piece off. But Mrs. Whisperer has just done us a roast dinner. Lovely bit of topside. Can't beat a bit of teddy. I just noticed something. Where's my Yorkshire puddings? I can't have beef without Yorkshires. Mrs. Whisperer. Yeah? Where's the Yorkshires? No I forgot them. You forgot them, did you? I did. What have you got to say to the subscribers? insane in the membrane we're gonna do we're gonna start with this membrane to start with we're just gonna staple a run down through put our osb on and then wrap that around the osb so the end trim of the osb is completely covered there she is look good old stanley staple gun i need that i need that and i need that one there let's crack on then what we're going to do, we're going to go with a 10 mil, just so I don't pierce through my OSB boards as well, because the OSB is 11 mil. So this here is the way forward. I did have 12s, but we just went and got some 10s, just to make sure they don't poke through. OSB's going off. Hopefully we've worked it out so we don't get no wastage, or very minimal as possible. Right with it, and then lay it down flat. Oh, 
thing about them. Two two. No, oh. yeah, barely any weight is there, isn't it? Take that. Get the old straight edge on. Did you add on the thickness of the blade? It's already five mil, isn't it? Okay, you can see it, because I can't. My eyesight is gone. I'm going to get me goggles, because then I'm going to cut right up through by it. Tell you what, you wouldn't want to do any project without a pair of grips. These grips are a lifesaver. Crack up through here. Like that. And that's what you call minimal wastage. Right, so all we're doing here now is just making sure that we've got the lines what we're screwing into, front of the beams. Chip just gone through to mark them. I'm gonna go through and just bang a load of screws in. These doing this you can see where your raft, where your beams are, where they need to be, where you need to screw. Again, most people use a nail gun, I ain't got one. So the option screws. They say, like that song, every little thing, it will be all right. I said, don't worry. Can't sing you the song, else I'll get done for copyright. Last one's not been marked, Chip. Check out the Makita, look. Get on the Makita! But yeah, that's all going on, so roof's up. That there is all singing and dancing. I just finished putting me noggins in. All me noggins is sat in. Put the OSB on the back here, so we got a bit of watertight space going on in the filter house. Can't really wrap the front yet. The rain's still coming in hard. I'm gonna finish off this feather edge. Just had to whack some noggins in the, the middle just so I can just secure the middle of it. Just going up and down so I can screw it in. People will say, why am I doing it like this? But I can screw in there. And then I can screw in there. So I can get a good fixing on it. You know what I mean? That's all been wrapped up with a waterproof membrane. That's all been wrapped up with a waterproof membrane. Got the tarpaulion on top. I can't put the rubber roof on. Basically, the bloody thing ain't turned up yet. So should be turning up Monday by any means. But I'm just out here tinkering around now. Just going to cut that feather edge, get the feather edge on up through there. Another job done. Another hour or so, just put this 6v2 on. So he's all plumb for me gate to go on. And then this is all going to get tiled. Right, so me and Toad's just whacking up the feather edge. Where's the bit of feather edge that's done? That one there, is it? Toad's cutting, he's drilling, he's marking. I'm hammering them up. What I've done here, if no one's ever done any fencing before, you need what you call a spacer. Four inch spacer, and what that does, I'll show you now. Keeps everything level, keeps everything plumb. Always put your treated side up, the bit you're cutting, just because that's a bit going to get the rain on it. Pop that one up to there, pop that one up to there. Make sure you're top against the fence, E up there, drive in there. Spacer there, come down to the level, spacer on the back, put up your wood, pre drilled hose so every single nail is in the correct place, and then send them home. But what you've got to remember when you do feather edge is that you can't get two bits of feather edge and nail them both together. You've got to leave a spacer to allow expansion. See, I trust him, see. Not even 16 year old yet, 15 years of age, and this boy can do more than what most kids can do because I teach them young. Get on, boy! Like that, see? Like that a lot. That's your drill. 
I tell you what, we ain't done a bad job on that, have we? It's just gone nine o'clock. You know, there's families that live around here. I can't be out here banging, screwing, nailing. I'm going to leave that for the bedroom. Do you know what I mean? I'm going to go upstairs, see Mrs. Whisperer, and I'll be back with you in the morning. Right then, so my rubber roof still haven't turned up. So what I decided to do, I'm going to finish off this feverage here. Put my post in for my gate. Made sure I'm completely 90, completely 90, with equal distance apart. Obviously, I've got that bit of 6B1 on there now as well. And I just thought it was an idea because I didn't want that gate the whole way. Basically, we had to trim down some of this for the height of the wall with the feather edge. So what I'm doing, instead of cutting them down, we've already got them cut and they're square. So what I'm doing here today, I'm going to be making the gate later on if I've got enough materials left. But I'm going to run a strip of feather edge across here. And then it will make the gate that little bit smaller and I'm using up the rest of the materials with no wastage because we love no wastage. So I've got a load of them down there to do. All ready to rock and roll. Let's get this up and I'll show you what it looks like in a minute. There's my pillar there. I can continue to bring this pillar up, but the structure on this, I really don't think I need it because this is where the gate will be hung. And this side, it's just to close the gate. And then obviously when I butt up into here with my feather edge in a minute, that there will finish dead plumb happy days all the way down through and do a nice finish and it'll cover in that void down the back so now we have the feather edge all done on the top looking pretty good likes that good way of using up a bit of the off cut got the video out every love just basically it's making me door and with 42 to go in here Laying down the OSB sheet, basically what I've done, I've knocked the frame up, six foot in length, I'm going to put a kickboard at the bottom, put my feather edge upright, and then, uh, well, all I'm doing to get these corners, just lifted the frame up, put the bit of timber underneath, mark where it needs to be cut on the angles, just to brace it, take the timber back out, and then go and cut me joints on the mitre saw. And the reason why I'm making it out of 4B2 because I've got a load of offcuts left from when I had the rafters and bits and pieces. I don't want to buy any more timber. Have a gate, be a bit lumpy, but I'll tell you what I got. I've got four decent quality brackets, 18 inches in length. They're going to pin on the back of this side. I'll show you what it looks like when I'm all done. Had a big old pile of wood down there a minute ago. Certainly eating it up, making this frame for this. Where's your goggles? My goggles? Well, I should have them on. I should have them on, but you know what it's like? You just get stuck into things. James, your gate looks good, but I think anyone can get in there. <laughs> I haven't finished yet, love. Let me bang a few more screws in here, look, because I've just got me packers in here to make sure that I can still open up my gate, but... I've never seen windows in a gate. <laughs> just hang on a minute. I ain't finished. Let me just get a few more screws in, and then we can see if it will open. Hopefully... work things out right it should be the absolute hammer he's done he's done he's done he's you've done, done it done. so the gate opens outwards not inwards haven't you yeah that's what you wanted outwards keep your air on girl just let me have a look see if it works if it works i'll be happy let me take this packer out take that one out Take that one out. La 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 la. <laughs> look at that, look. That's what you call the hammer right there, look. Perfect. Just got to put some clad on it. Not bad for an amateur, eh? <laughs> look at that boy. He can build anything. And he opens all the way up level. See, there was a bit of working out, love, because our garden's on that slope. 
I had that there to worry about because this has all got to be finished at a, at a later date. But looking at that, time that gets finished, time that runs underneath there. Look, look at that for measurements. Get me the spirit level. I'm, I'm too good here. Is that good? Look at that. That there is what you call the absolute hammer. Have the bolt on it here. Back the bolt on it there. Padlock on the inside. I've got a. I won't do it yet, but the back side of those brackets there, what I'm going to do, the back side of them, I'm going to grind a few out so people can't take the gate off from behind. The reason why I've done it like this as well, because I wanted it to step in to make it look a little bit better. And then it don't get hammered with the rain with my top plate on. Happy with that. I'm happy with myself again. There we go then. So now we have a gate. More than happy with that. Time I get the concrete in here on the bottom just to make it the same level. Gonna look the absolute hammer. I gotta order myself a handle, gotta order myself a better lock. All I've done for time being, I went through my toolbox and I found myself a little bit of a lock. So I've just screwed them on there. I haven't pinned them on properly, just screwed them on, put them onto there, and it just helps to keep it secure. But yeah, more than happy with that. Tidy, tidy job, and it fits the absolute hammer, opens and closes, no problem whatsoever. I probably will get a bit of trouble with any door, any door that you build when the wood's, I mean, I'm lucky the wood's wet, but you know what it's like, the wood expands and swells up and does what it wants to do, and then you just got to adjust the hinges and sort things out, but I'm open at the moment, it's all fine, so uh, yeah, hopefully rubber roof turns up tomorrow, and then I can bang that on as well and give you a bit more of an update, happy, happy days. Rubber roof's just turned up. That looks heavy. It is heavy. It's bigger than a pawn liner. It says it's 67 kilos. That's a fair weight, isn't it? Right, let's get all the gear out the back and I'll show you what I got. Caution, 62.5 kilos. That's a fair weight, that, isn't it? Woo. Right then, let's show you what I got. So, obviously I've got the rubber roof, which is going up there. I've got my trim plates, I've got my face plates. I've got contact bonded adhesive, flex proof. I've also got flexi proof, water-based EPD membrane adhesive for professional use only. So I've also got my four corner pieces. I've got my, I ain't even sure what they're all called, but basically, by looking at what needs to be done, they need to be spaces in between. But I'm going to call in my roofer mate because I've got a hell of a mate that's a good roofer and he's going to give me an. So there's no point in me rushing up and getting it done. He's kindly uh, set me on my way of what I needed and we're going to get it fitted probably tomorrow night. Get this tarp off, bone dry out tomorrow. No rain forecast tomorrow, so I'll get the roof fitted tomorrow night. Happy days. A bit more of a close up what I got. That there's the uh, contact bonding adhesive. Got the flexi proof water based EPDM membrane adhesive. I've got three longer trims for the faceplate at the front. I've got the normal trims for the side. And this here basically just allows you spaces in between each one. I'll show you as I'm doing it. But I've got the end caps who looks nice and fancy i've got the ones for the front they're all going on here i've got four corner pieces as well and then obviously the rubber liner and as you can see here what i was talking about about the face plate so along the front edge the only edge that you're going to see for my garden I've, we've got the bigger ones so they're what are they an inch probably three and a half inch in depth and then these are the smaller ones on the side which is probably say two inch obviously the side plates go up there you're never going to see them but it just tidies it up and helps pin down the rubber roof face plate there's the rubber got to get that up there on the roof and uh roll it out leave it for half an hour but we'll show you how to set it all up when my mate comes round because he knows what he's doing i don't know what i'm doing but i'm going to give him a good help good hand and uh we'll get a lot better finished job on it happy happy days just lifted up the old rubber roof I've run the brush over it about five or six times. Just gonna roll this out now, let it set for about half an hour to an hour. Let the rubber do what it needs to do. It's hot today. 
just finished day's graft. I'm gonna get this roof on. Not a bad tidy job though on the finish. And then hopefully this here will look the absolute hammer when it's done. Here we go then. So a big thanks to Mike for coming up. M. Williams roofing. Anyone need to get hold of him in the Southwest? I'll tell you what, hell of a chap. And we're gonna show you his work. There he is, look. He is. Get up there, get the roof on boys. <laughs> like that, called in the professional, see? Cause this job is something I don't want to be doing myself. That's the hammer then, boy. Long as we got that, we got that same all the way, yeah. What have we got hanging out the back? Might just get down that way a bit because we got a batting going on for us. Yeah, so what we do, mate, is to do this, lad. There he is, look! Keep that one just that there and then go on the wood. Do like what I'm doing here, that's it. We'll pull a bit down that way. Go on, just go slow, mate. Be right. Most tacky, quite warm, isn't it, Moggy? There's a bit up up there on it, boy. Oh, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, mother for the rabbits. He's out, my beauty. And he's not going on that one, man. Eddie, yeah. <laughs> mate, I'm boiling here, look. He's a beard, isn't <laughs> Yeah, we'll get out the blues and then a bite. Get on, mate. Thank you very much, boys. Top lads, hell of a job. Check them out, hell of a job. So yeah, absolute cracking job. Tidies it right up. But yeah, I got to paint underneath. But more than happy with that. I'll go up there, show you from up there. Check out that for a view then. So uh, no crinkles, no bubbles, and uh, more than happy with that, to be fair with you. And Mikey said to me, he said, I've done a cracking job on laying the roof down to start with. And that's why it's got such a lovely finish on it. So uh, happy, happy days. Next job, I suppose, whack the guttering on. Right then, Mrs. Whisperer. Tonight, me and you are fitting this guttering. We're going to get the guttering fitted. Basically, it's all turned up. So uh, what we've got here, we've got one downpipe. We've got two four-meter lengths of gutter. We've also got one end cap. We've got one joiner. We've got one, another end stop. And then we've got a turn. For the bottom of the downpipe, we've got 10 brackets, and then we've got four pipe clips. So we're going to get all this fitted, show you what we're going to do as we're doing it. Let's just crack on with tonight's job. That one I'm going to bring back. What's that on there from there to there? That's 92. 92. Bit overkill, but I've got extra brackets, so I'm just as well use them. Actually, do it. What I'm going to do though, I'm going to put, because I've got an extra one, I'm going to put an extra one there just to support the weight of that, I think. Well, actually, I think that'll be alright. That should be enough on there. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Right, so what I've done. I've ran a string line from that point to that point, with that point being 20 mil higher than what this point is. So then when I run my guttering in, all the water should run down to this back end. All right, just button on the end cap. Like so. And then we'll start with this end and work our way up. should be measured so it fits just on the outside there as tight as I can get it let me just check before I clip it in bang on like that exactly where it needs to go got it tight just one two show you how good this is so i've never done guttering before but what it says to make sure that the guttering finishes dead there exactly where i've got it measurements perfect now what i'm going to do is continue this down to there down to the end 
let's crack on and get it done all right then let's give it a test pour some water in see what happens pour it in but look at that look can you see that pour a bit more in see it running it's running away an absolute beauty another job done perfect now what i've got to do next job get the tools down tap into here pin it against this fence right then so all i've done for now for time being i've just connected it up there ran it dead straight put it out here reason being i've got to take it back off got to get the feather edge on got to get the feather edge on here there's all my feather edge. I've got 45 sheets of eight foot in length. Builders Merchant didn't have any batten. So what they did, they very kindly went through all of their old stock, what they had. And there's some bits here that are not the best in the world. But I said to them, thank you very much. I'll go through them. I'll pick out the best of it for what I need. I'll cut off the bits that I don't need. And I'll show you that, what I'm going to do with that when I get to that. It'll probably be in the next video, to be fair with you. So yeah, massive progress been made this week. Been non-stop, working the weekend, coming home every night after work and just doing as much as I possibly can. You can see the progress that's been made here this week. If you haven't subscribed already and you really like this content, I'd really highly appreciate it if you can subscribe to this channel. Always like the video for me as well. It's a massive, massive big thing for me. If you can like these videos for me, I'm totally over the moon. Absolute massive long video this week. You know, normally I try to keep it to about 20, 25 minutes. But that being said, look, I'm going to end the video here because I've got to go upstairs. I've got to have a shower. Come back next week, check out what I get up to next week and you'll see a little more progress. Little update, electrics going in next week. I've also got all the feverage going on. I've got an idea what I'm doing over here. Well, just subscribe. Notification bell's on. I'll see you all soon.